Toast to Freedom project is very much a continuation of that great tradition started back in the 1960s and 70s and 80s and 90s, where artists were prepared to stand up for freedom, to stand up for human rights, and to make sure that those rights that are enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights became a reality. Everything started a year ago, uh, likely parallel with the the start, the kickoff of the Arab Spring. I flew to see Bill Shipsey, the founder of Art for Amnesty, to talk about the 50th anniversary of Amnesty and the need of a song. And I had the idea we could do that at Levon's place, and everybody really loved the idea. Well, certainly the primary session, where we were really putting the song together and um, creating the, the backing track, the initial backing track. That was great, it was a lot of fun. I live on studio, it's a very inspiring place. And till the end of the days, I would love to make my albums there, or write and create music there. We wanted to have a studio like this where those kinds of things could happen. And any kind of a good idea, you, you know, you don't get cold water poured on it around here. The vibe in the recording on the basic track was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, it's one of the best experiences of my life, really, in my professional life, because it went pretty flawlessly, really. The minute we were in Woodstock, we had a great band, great musicians together, and we didn't really need to pick up the phone because people came to us. We didn't need to call a piano player because Donald Fagan sat in Levon's kitchen. You know, and so on. So love to join. I've been involved with it. I'm from a donation angle for, for a long time, you know, on and off over the years. And um, it goes without saying at this point that amnesty is one of the best things you can donate your time or money to. If you really want people to take an idea to their heart, if they, you want to take the idea of human rights, the idea of freedom to their hearts, you need art. Is that the original track? Okay. 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 That's you. Yeah, okay. Beautiful. Now to be a part of this is going to be a chance for myself and all of us, the mute, all the players, to finally uh, contribute. To our brothers and sisters in the grave, what's that one? Is that That's one? just Carl. That's just, just Carl. Carl. Cap Mo was not far. He came in, played guitar, and sang. I'm talking about freedom. The song's good. It wasn't so much about the song that got me here, but coming here reminded me like, oh, wait a minute, there's like stuff going on out there. It's like things that need to be uh, called attention to. A lot of time people define our work of Amnesty International in terms of what we're against. We're against torture, we're against people being killed, we're against people being locked up. But we don't often get a chance to express what we're for. And in that room was everything that I believe we're fighting for. That last line should be everybody. Um. The primary criteria was artistic integrity. We wanted to get people singing on this who, by the nature of their work, were credible to be singing about freedom. when the communist regime was in power in Benin, I was in a position where if I wanted to continue singing, I would have to stay and do the propaganda music, which I refused to do. So I have to leave my country. I have to escape from my country. And that is something that is a shock that till today, I, I just, I, I look back and give me chills because I'm like, wow, I could have go to jail because I want, just want to express my, my, my opinion. I believe music is particularly effective in moving the emotions of the heart, and after that, the head will follow. Love, respect, and forgiveness, united in the dream for victory. Artists have always stood shoulder to shoulder with Amnesty International, and it was really important for me to contribute to this project because I am the next generation, and I think it brought together over 50 artists from all over the world, from Paris to Berlin to New York to Los Angeles, 
who all came together as a collective to support Amnesty International. And it was such an honor to be part of that collective. To our brothers and sisters in the way. When you're mixing and editing something like this with all these contributions, you got to see the forest and you have to see every tree. <laughs> that was quite a process. I mean, I mean, Larry Campbell was the architect of that, I feel. And uh, he's just so good at, at, uh, at voices and, and hearing where each singer would shine. We walk away. Oh, I see. Uh, no one is free. No one is free. Till everyone is free. We're you know, there's a lot of happy little accidents. And, you know, somebody sang a, a line a certain way. And you thought, well, this is not going to work. But then you heard someone else who sang that line or the next line a certain way. And, and you put them together. And all of a sudden, you got magic, you know. Essie and Marianne Faithful, two completely different generations, but there's, I think there was a, just a tiny little magic moment when we put them together. You know. To go from a voice like, let's say, Carly Simon, who is also fantastic, to a Jimmy Barnes, who was just, rah, just like crazy, almost a heavy metal type voice, was, uh, you know, fascinating. Susan and uh, David, an Iranian and Israeli singing together about freedom. That's what this is all about. Eric Burden, I thought, was truly amazing because I was also a big fan of his when I was a kid. And he was a big singer in the 60s with the animals. Whenever I get a telephone phone call, call him, I know that there's something interesting that's going to be proposed. And um, when he mentioned this to me, I thought, why, well, yes, this is a great thing to be a part of. And Angelique Cougeot, with anybody was, you know, she, that woman is special. For me to um, express freedom, I use one of the words of freedom in Yoruba, which means Ominira. It's the freedom of humankind. It's the freedom of soul of humankind. It's the freedom of speech. The birthright of freedom is Ominira. It is so amazing and peculiar to me that some artists came on the song which came from a completely different genre, like Gentleman, who is a reggae artist. Till the very last day, you know, people even sang on it because they just happened to be around and said, oh, can, I, can we join, like you, McGregor. Hello. Up at the end or down at the end? Find her love to eternal bliss. Up. It's just our kind of human right to be free and to have a voice and, and uh, to not be punished for using that voice. There's a need uh, in every country, even the countries that we call free countries, to make sure that the authorities don't overstep the line. Everybody put their heart into it. Everybody did. Everybody performed it as though they believed in it and believed in the cause and believed in um, the value of their contribution to this. Yes, with this I will stand up and fight. Freedom. That's great. Bravo! C'est comme ça, c'est bien. The finest moments of my life have been sticking up for other people. And to do that for Amnesty is a great privilege. People want freedom. People want to be left alone. Pursuit of happiness. That's what you can do in Woodstock. And people have far more power, if only they knew it. I've always believed that if uh, millions of people sent letters that just chock-a-blocked the front doors of some ministers, of some presidents, of some, and just by the sheer weight of the letters, of the, of the appeals, then they'd have to look. And then if everyone decided that that was their opinion, then you could really change things. What they're looking for is young supporters that will join Amnesty, you know, maybe contribute to them, may, maybe possibly work for Amnesty. And part of it's raising, raising money, and part of it's just r raising awareness so people know what, what they're doing and, and hopefully the, they'll help. You know, and this is my way of helping. I'm proud to be supporting Amnesty International's 50 years of protecting human rights.
I'd like to thank all of the people who gave their time and all of you who made this project happen because you know Amnesty International, we have limited resources so we rely on the, on the time and uh, effort that people voluntarily put in to projects like this. Human rights is everybody's business so nobody needs to even wait for Amnesty International to take action. If you see injustice, if you see a violation, take action. You can do it. That's the spirit of Amnesty. Amnesty is here to catalyze and support the process. When Peter Benz, the lawyer who created Amnesty International, set it up 50 years ago, I don't think he ever imagined that uh, 50 years later it's going to become the largest human rights movement in the world. It's an amazing story, you know, which is uh, one man's outrage resulting in a global movement for human rights. Freedom.